All right, Liliac fans, you recognize this guy. Hey, Sam, thanks for joining us. Hey, thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. How really are you? I appreciate that. How, how are you and how's, how's the family? Everybody good? Yeah, everyone's great. Uh, right now, we're currently working, um, finishing some projects and mm -hmm. doing some more assignments before we head on tour, which is going to be, I think, either Wednesday. We Our first show is on February 1st. Now, is, this, is this a part of the Rise Up Tour, a continuation, or, or, or is that... Yeah, so this is um, basically the first start of the Rise Up Tour in 2024, uh, but we are going to continue performing songs like from the Madness album, which was released last year, um, and also, you know, incorporating songs that you guys all love and enjoy, you know, the popular covers that um, basically started our career. So what about any any new, maybe some new originals you're surprised the fans with? Uh, we have been working on new originals, but we have we're not really prepared to perform them just yet. Yeah. Um, and the fact is because you know we've had a lot of other projects that we needed to get done. Um, like for example, uh, during the months of like uh, November and December, we were working on the Heaven and Hell cover and the music video, and then in December we were doing the Carol of the Bells music video and song. And then now we are currently trying to work on the Rise Up music video uh, because, you know, we're having the Rise Up tour. So we want to like basically couple it, um, couple it with accentuate that. that with the theme. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, that's smart. That's good. That's great. OK, so update the uh, fans out there. Abby's not going to be on this on this part. Um, yeah, so for the first leg of the tour, um, we are having a fill-in drummer. His name is Paul. He's very talented. Um, and he's only 16 years old. Wow. Uh, but Abigail will be uh, continuing on with the tour once we hit the summer months. So like July, August, continuing, so on and so forth. Yeah. You guys have a pretty good history of younger musicians. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep, yep. So I'm I don't think that should that way. Yeah, that shouldn't be an issue for anybody with you guys. I mean, <laughs> right. uh, that's great. So uh, for, first and foremost, congratulations on Abby's wedding and, and oh, yeah, her thank life. you that's so great. much. It was definitely a, an amazing experience just to yeah. be able to see my sister getting married the wedding was a beautiful like the scenery was immaculate and mm -hmm. just like the whole you know getting to see everyone in one place like our friends and family and just socializing with them eating mm -hmm. together dancing together it was just an just such an exhilarating moment you know what I mean and yeah that's just, great I saw the photos you guys project. posted of the wedding they were like beautiful she looked yeah. beautiful. The whole family looked great. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we talked about Paul a little bit. I'm looking at my notes. I don't want to miss nothing. Of course, um, yeah, of course. Okay. So also there's a festival I read coming up. Guitars Under the Sun Festival. Yeah. 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 Guitars Under, it's, is it Stars or Sun? I can't remember. I think um, it's. I can't remember. Maybe you might be right. I could. Yeah. Be so Guitars Under the Stars. Um, I think that is going to be in Oregon, Eugene, Oregon, right? Yep. I definitely, yeah, I did so see that. We have played there before, like especially um, in 2019 when we first ever started like our debut tour, like we've never toured before. And I think that was our first show oh. I, I believe, or first festival we've ever played at. Now, you guys are headlining this. Is that correct? Yeah, we are. And oh, really that's see, that's nice. We can't leave that part out. No, no, no. It's it's going to be a great uh, show, I can tell. And it's cool because usually they put this festival in a different location in Oregon, but now they're putting it closer to a bigger city, Eugene. And so I feel like more people are going to be coming out and it's going to oh, be for a sure. Cool yeah. How does that feel? You guys, you guys really put in the work. This is a band in Liliac that you guys are like legit. You define grassroots. You guys define yeah. coming from the very beginning and playing out on peers and covers and the bands evolved and you guys have been just getting better and better and better how does it feel when you got when, when when the word headlining is mentioned in the same sentence now as you guys well i mean it definitely shows the amount of progress we've made and it's actually you know it's a great title to hear because um it just shows you how much work you've put in you know being like an assiduous hardworking person is just paying off and you know being able to hear that it kind of like resembles where we've come you know what I mean and it's just showing that progress over time and it's like it's honestly it makes you feel like you are you know reaching success and mm -hmm. it's honestly a great feeling and it should be you guys have an allegiance of fans you guys your fans mean business 
they are Liliac, True Blue. They are just yeah, great, no, for, great fans. Sure. They are very, um, very dedicated fans, and we appreciate them so much. You know, they, they are usually, um, you know, we have fans that come to our shows, multiple shows, not just like one show. Like you know what I mean? Like we have them coming to different states wherever we're going and it's great to see you know familiar faces no matter where we go and yeah. then obviously online you know we have dedicated fans always promoting and sharing our music whenever we release something new they're always you know telling people about it and supporting us along the way it's just like we truly appreciate them so much we wouldn't be here without them you know yeah you know it's reminiscent of of legendary bands like the grateful dead and yes. Coldplay. And some of these bands have fans that are so loyal that they travel, they they spend their vacation money, and they travel it's to different so cities. True. Yep. That's got to be so satisfying and, and also humbling, I'm thinking, for you guys. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely humbling. I mean, we, like I said, um, we love our fans so much, very dearly, and um, we we want to do the most that we can for them. You know what I mean? Whether that is like creating content as much content for them, releasing new music and um, obviously going to the shows and having them come see us in person. And obviously we love doing meet and greets and like talking to our fans, getting to know them personally. It's just, um, it's, it's very nice and um, awarding to see how much fans like actually are loyal and how much they love you you know what i mean and our music speaks to them and actually helps them in so many ways yeah it really is a two-way street for the bands that are successful anyway how you treat your fans is is paramount and in, in, in how of how course. successful you can be and i've noticed the thing about liliac is you guys are really great with actually interacting with your fans i mean you respond to them a lot in your social media yeah. you guys will do like facebook lives from restaurants and take questions <laughs> while you wait for your food you know that's great that really gives the fans a a, a sense of hey we're with we're like right there with lily right you know what I mean? right it's kind of like a facetime call with your best friend or something it's like they're actually there with you experiencing it all you know and it's it's honestly great because that's how you build connections with people exactly they feel a part of it all which they are hmm. you know that's yes, great. No, they are. They definitely are. Now, I wanted to move this interview um, and, and and dial in on Sam, the individual, for a little bit. Um, okay. A lot of your fans are interested in your guitar playing. Now, I've watched you guys since, you know, when the first time I, I heard of you guys? You yeah. When, when, you guys, when you guys were kids, mm -hmm. your 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 van got broken and all your equipment was stolen. Yeah, that was in San Francisco. Yeah, that was yes. such... And I actually movie. donated a couple of dollars to it, and everybody, a lot of people donated for you guys. And just to, because you guys didn't, you guys weren't where you are back then. You were really, you know, everything mm -hmm. meant a lot to you guys, which it still does. But that's when my first exposure to Liliac was, was way back then. So I've actually wow. seen you guys coming up, and you as a guitar player, um, I don't want your head to blow up too big, but you have developed into like a, a in my opinion, you're one of the best guitarists doing their thing right now, Sam. You've, really, you've, you've really wow. come a long way. You really have. <laughs> That's a huge compliment, and I appreciate it. Thank you. How much time do you put in when you're not touring, as far as practicing goes? Is practicing still a key to you and to your advancement in guitar playing? I mean, of course, it is still you know a key. Um, I try to practice at least, at least because like you know sometimes you want to go more, but. Sure. At, at least like personal like focusing hyper focusing on guitar is like two hours because for the other rest of the day I am working on other things like whether it is um editing photos or doing editing videos stuff like that but we also do have rehearsal time so that's also another form of practicing you know going through the set with the band and stuff like that and usually that is another two hours and stuff like that so um also I am learning a new instrument as well. So I have to dedicate some time into that as well. Which one? So, uh, I mean, I want to say it, but. Oh, okay. That's, that's I that I should keep it like a surprise. Yeah. yeah, I got you. I understand. That's exciting though. Yeah, it is exciting. I'm I'm yeah. honestly really happy about it. And that's another thing about Liliac. Like the band is multi-instrumentalist. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We, uh, multi like all of our band members, they they know at least two or three other instruments. So when I saw Melody break out a flute and she started, yeah. bending, I was like, what a flute. That's <laughs> awesome. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's honestly, 
rewarding because like when you learn something new you can apply it to multiple mm -hmm. instruments obviously you know the woodwinds are a completely different from like singing or i mean sure. maybe it's probably similar because you have to like breathe right. or whatever yeah, we'll um like because she used to play bass and so like that's a totally different like world if oh, that yeah. makes sense so obviously it's kind of like starting from the beginning but i mean the music theory is still the same like you know what i mean like all the comps that still apply it's just a different way of playing if that makes right. sense and she could actually shred on a bass pretty pretty good. She, she I, does, she, yeah, she yeah, yeah. Play bass, yeah. She's no slouch at all on bass either. And really, one of the most unique, powerful singers in the industry right now. Yeah, no, um, I honestly believe that too. Like she has an amazing vo voice. It blows me away and every time I see uh, something new. Um, like some of the highs she hits, I didn't know. I mean, she she's got that powerful gravelly voice. But I when I heard, I forgot what song it was. Uh, I forgot what song it was, but she hit these high notes. And I was just like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> I was just like, "Where did that come from?" You know? Yeah, no, she can really get up there, and I think it's um a combination of vocal screams from legendary artists or vocalists. Like I think she says she got inspiration from David Lee Roth when he would do like those high screams, and then also I think it's called the whistle register, and like she it is, all, it is. yeah. So, like Mariah Carey, she could hit yeah, the Mariah Carey, notes. exactly. Exactly. I think the band with White Stripes, you guys did that White Stripes cover, right? Yes, yeah. I, that's yeah, the, the, I think that's the song I heard. Yeah, no, yeah. She incorporated a lot of whistle. Notes I was blown away. Now, what about, um, did you take a lot of guitar lessons coming up? Or, or, or was it some self-taught and then lessons a mix, or what was it? Um, it's it was a mix so basically how it worked is like when we first started learning instruments we went to a place called Downey Music Center which is in California because that's where we you know lived and grew up mm -hmm. um, so we just basically learned the basics from there just like you know l learning music theory how it all works and then like just getting to know your instrument but then after a while like I started investigating more on my own and like trying to learn more advanced techniques because um, I just wanted to, you know, go to another level. And so that's when I started, you know, doing a lot of research online and like getting practical exercises and just, you know, practicing many, many hours and to getting to the level where I am now, it's just like a huge, you know, jump from knowing nothing and then all the way here to becoming like a professional, you know? Yeah. So it's, it was a mix of both, but I would say majority was self-taught. How much of, has your technique changed? Let's say the Sam of five years ago to the Sam today. How much of your techniques changed over the last five years or so? Well, I mean, so speaking like on technical terms, like you definitely learn a lot of new things and a lot of intricate details, like even going back to like how you hold your pick properly, stuff like that. And it's weird because holding it differently, you can reach faster speeds you know what I mean and obviously you have to be relaxed when you are um shredding on the guitar you can't be tense or anything like mm -hmm. that so that's what I, I've noticed like when I first started learning guitar I was not really you know too relaxed if that makes sense I was a little uh, stiff but you know learning like little mental and physical notes about how you play guitar it honestly changes a lot and so basically um Another thing is like, um, you know, just going through exercises really helps, even if it's just like, you know, chromatic exercises, stuff like that, it helps build finger strength and finger independence. So that way you're able to play cooler and faster licks on the guitar, you know, and when you learn or like learn new songs from, you know, other bands, uh, especially that incorporate shredding guitar, uh, like Ingve Malsing songs or Ooh. Paul Gilbert songs, stuff like that, you learn so much and yeah. it improves you, like it improves your technique as well. Last time I talked to you, this is your, I've had Liliac on, on my podcast twice and this is your third appearance here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I met you, remember we, we met in Mississippi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. We I, met in yeah, Mississippi. I remember that, yeah. Yeah, it was cool. Um, Paul Gilbert, somebody you, you, is one of your, you you were influenced yeah. by Paul Gilbert. Talk a yes. little bit about his his style and what you've learned from him. Okay, sure. So I mean, what I mainly learned from him was um his alternate picking. Um, that is something <clears throat> because he really discussed and basically what alternate picking is just like 
a fluid motion of going down, up, down, up, right? But, you know, we have the three, so basically on, when you learn like a scale, we incorporate like three fingers, right? On, on a whole scale. And basically there's a, a section where when you go down, up, down, down on one string, you have to go up on the next string. And that is a hard transition to master. Mm. But he does this exercise where it's like, like, let's say on the B string, we have 12, 13, and 15. And then you go up on the E string on the 12th. And then you have to go back down. So just going through that motion of going down, up, down, up, then back down. And, you know, practicing that exercise was a huge game changer for me because when you learn how to transition effortlessly from, you know, one string to the next, and it's also about pick slanting because there's um, different ways where you slant your pick and uh, depending on the motion. And so basically when you do it correctly, it'll be way effort it'll be way easier and effortless of of a you know fluid motion you know what i mean mm -hmm. and I so that is that is what helped me uh when it comes to mastering alternate picking um and then obviously he also there was some another technique that i learned from him was like uh string skipping arpeggios and the way he string skips is also includes alternate picking but he does include some hammer rolls and pull offs but He's just, he's crazy when it comes to like picking every single note. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you ever, when you're playing live, because I've watched you play live several times, and it just amazes me, not only with you, but with like a lot of really good lead guitar players. It's amazing how like, I mean, I'm sure there's some mistakes here and there, you know, I mean, I mean nobody's perfect, right. but it's really like mind blowing how good you have to be to pull off like a solo, especially if it's somebody else's solos. So you have a lot yeah. of people's fans watching you. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're going to be, you know, oh, let's see you know, how good he does compared to that person. Is there any stress? Do you ever get, do you ever, is there any nerves on when you're coming up on some tr tricky parts during live performances? I mean, yeah, sometimes uh, there are moments where I'm like, oh, I really hope I can get this one right. Cause like, yeah. um, like I said, <clears throat> it, uh, it always it depends on how you start it first. Like if you hit it right at the beginning, like, okay, what I'm trying to explain is like, you have to, from, let's say there's a lick. You have to get it right right at the beginning or else the rest of it won't it throws fall. the rest of it off right yeah, exactly yeah. and so that's what i worry sometimes is like oh if i accidentally like um not pick it right like let's say i instead of it's let's say i'm supposed to pick it on an upstroke but i pick it on a downstroke that's going to throw me off you know stuff like that and sometimes it's subconsciously like sometimes you just when you're in the moment you don't think about it every single detail you just want to play it and i've noticed that sometimes that helps a lot because if you really like really like um think about every single thing sometimes that'll throw you off too yeah. it's weird i don't know why but like um i've noticed that like when you go through the like go through um the repetitions of doing it over and over again it'll become you know natural and it'll mm -hmm. feel like you know you don't have to think about it anymore and so right. i feel like that is the best feeling ever because it's like oh i got this i don't need to worry about it you know but that that is only um, achieved when you practice it or repeat it over and over again. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It, it reminds me, like, I, I, I do interviews with the TV show The Voice um, uh -huh. on NBC, and I do a lot of yeah. them. Yeah, this is going to be my 17th season with, with The Voice coming up. Doing That's amazing. Singers. It's a lot of fun. And I'll ask a lot of times when they have their blind auditions, and I'll ask them like, how how nervous are you when you're like when you're walking out to the stage? You got these like legendary coaches yeah. that you have to sing in front of, you know? And um. A lot of them kind of, in a, in a way, explained it how you did. You know, you you, you they, they practice, they sing it, but it, it's it's they they let their natural ability kick kick yeah, in autopilot. Exactly. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's exactly what it is too. Even yeah. with the guitar. Yeah, and then then one of them told me one time that the real terrifying is is when they go to the live rounds, and it's no longer oh. recorded. Now it's live with a million people. You know, millions. Yeah, of people. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that one would definitely be more nerve wracking. Yeah, it's like, for sure. Yeah, if it's like if we were to uh perform at like the Grammys or something and it's all live, you know what I mean? That yeah. would be more nerve wracking. With like really, really that. legendary people watching you in the front yeah. row. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's funny. So when you guys write songs, um, is it a collaborative effort or do you do you come up with your riffs for your original music? Um does your dad ever have an input on that still? Does, does, does Melody handle the vocal part? What's the songwriting process for the band? 
So, I mean, yeah, it's definitely um, still a collaborative effort, but I still, you know, try to, I come up with majority of like the guitar riffs and instrumentation for certain songs. And then we come in together to figure out lyrics and melody lines and stuff like that. Um, but it's, like I said, it's always a process. So like, usually I have to figure out how the song is going to go. And then uh, like I record my parts and then I give it to, you know, the main studio where my dad is working. And then he'll like, you know, do like, for example, mixing, mastering and like um, recording the vocals, harmonies, like all of these things, you know what I mean? And so it's definitely a collaborative effort, but um, just the process, it takes a while, you know, yeah. you complete a whole song and make it sound, you know, to its final product and to make sure that all the elements are you know perfect and they're at their most enhanced level it's just it takes a while you know what i mean because like when you first start a session like the draft is not gonna sound like the final thing you know what i mean and obviously you go through changes if like there's something you don't like you know what i mean like let's say you know at first we thought this sounded good but then when you hear it again you're like ah maybe we should change it and do a different part there you know what i mean stuff like yeah. that yeah for sure how much family time do you guys get in away from the music? Because you're, you're, I mean, it's, it's, you know, you play on stage together, you tour together. How much time does Sam get for Sam time and for Melody to get Melody time and individual, ab ab you know, the whole family? Yeah. I'm, it's important, I would think. Yeah, no, it is definitely important to, you know, have free time to yourself just to, um, you know, relax and rejuvenate and stuff like that. Uh, for me, I like going to the gym <clears throat> because it just puts in a focus on like my mental and on my physical health. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously we still do stuff together as a family. Like we would go out to dinners and stuff sure. like that. Um, and, or like go to the movies, you know, things like that. But um, for me, I like to, when I'm like by myself and just like want to just spend time, me time, I like to, like I said, go to the gym, read a book, uh, take a bath, go to like do a spa day like you know get a massage yeah. or something like sure. that yeah um and or like hang out with other friends you know stuff like that but are you finding yourself in the band are you finding you guys getting more and more recognized out in public now um yeah i know i noticed that like it was funny because whenever we travel to another state especially in the airports for some reason um we like arrive let's say we go on vacation or something we always get somebody somebody coming up to us saying like oh um i know you guys from you know online i see your content all the time yeah. you know what i mean We're like oh that really made our day um even actually it was funny because literally last week when i went to the gym someone came up to me and they're like i literally like listen to your guys's music and i'm like what there's no way you know he was like i saw you walking around but i didn't want to like interrupt you with your workouts or whatever so yeah. when he saw me that i was gonna you know i was finishing my last set he came up to me he was like hey dude like i list i i follow you guys and like you guys have amazing music and then we just had a, like a great conversation from there on yeah that's that's great um i have a i have a co-worker of mine he's a huge fan of you guys he's my yeah. age in his 50s he loves liliac and um I wanted to know if you can give him a quick shout out. His name is Craig Lowry. Craig Lowry. Yeah. Hi, Craig Lowry. This is Samuel Christia from Liliac. We just want to say thank you so much for your love and support. We understand that you're a huge fan of our band, and we hope to see you um, at our concert. And then your fans would probably hunt me down, and if I didn't give them an opportunity to <laughs> address the fans, and then and after that, if you want to wrap up the interview and tell everybody where they can follow Liliac and where they can get merchandise and, and your website. Okay, sweet. Yeah, for sure. Um, so just want to say to all Liliac fans or fangs, we like to call them, mm -hmm. um, that we do have a website. It's www.liliacfan.com. And there you can find all of our tour dates. And we also have a storefront on Shopify where you can purchase the merchandise. We just released a new one, a glow in the dark t-shirt called Rise Up. And um, it has all the tour dates on the back as well. So you have to get that and basically represent the upcoming tour um, because, you know, you want to be a part of the movement. Um, and then obviously you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we also have TikTok as well. So um, that's like all of our social media handles. And we are, and I'm Samuel Christia, the guitarist from Liliac.
Well, Sam, you're a pleasure to talk to. You're a great young man. You're a fantastic, terrific guitar player. Really, really coming into the top, in my opinion, the top guitarist. I'm not saying you're the top guitar player in the world, but I think you could get there. Yeah, yeah. You could get I there. I hope so. I well, hope so. You're so young, Sam, and you're, and you're so good already. Thank 15, you. 20 years from now, if you stick with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, so just stay with it. Um, I appreciate you joining us. I really do. And I hope you can come back soon. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I would love to do this again sometime soon. Thanks so much, Sam. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.